Hello everyone, Geo here. I have finally mined enough Divine Shards to buy the Endgame stuff in the Divine Shard Exchange Shop. Be sure to check my Infinite Divine Shard Farm video to do the same. This staff has the capability to one-shot any enemy in the entire game. If anyone somehow survives the massacre, Joseph and the Wizard can easily clean up any remaining enemies. This team is set up in a way that the Trinity Rain can be charged and fired instantly before any enemy has a chance to attack back. Not only that, this team has more than enough healing capabilities to survive multiple fights as well. There's a lot of setup involved in this team, and one wrong gambit could cause your magic nuke to not go off in time. So follow my tactic setup exactly how it is. Now, let's take a look at my wizard first. He has a Carnelian pendant in order to pull off the three AP cost nuke and a sorcerer's medallion for more damage. You simply just need to set your fireball to fire only when he has one AP left. His third required AP will be donated to him by our cleric here. It grants healed targets one AP when used. Because we want this to happen as soon as possible, I have put both plumes on her to give her the highest possible initiative. Her gambits are set to target the highest magical attack user so that only the wizard will get these buffs. Next, we have our witch. Her job is to grant our wizard more initiative from the quick action skill provided by the Tailwind Cape. The Cairo Staff gives her more initiative to do this sooner, and the Lapis Pendant allows her to use her Focus Sight skill to provide true hit rate to the Magic Nuke. No one can dodge this attack as a result. Have Focus Sight set to target only the back row and quick action set to the highest magical attack. Focus Sight is only available to the Witch at level 15. Our Joseph here is our White Hood Carrier. Make sure to set his Quick Impetus skill to target only the buffed character. I am currently using a Lapis in this setup, but a Carnelian Pendant would be far better. I will make the switch as soon as I get another one. He is also using an Azure Crest Shield for more passive power and the ever-so-popular King's Blade. Radiant Knights have a magic nullifying shield. As a result, I set Yosef to target the highest magical defense cav to get them. Have him heal only when required, and just slice the lowest HP target. And speaking of Radiant Knights, let's see how the team deals with the most anti-magic class in the game. In my next video, I plan to show off all the rewards for executing and rejecting all recruitable characters. Subscribe to see it as soon as it is released. Joseph immediately goes after one, resulting in them wasting their passive power to protect themselves. This means the nuke has no obstacles and one-shots everyone as God intended. This team can handle one Radiant Knight, that's for sure. But what if we put three Radiant Knights together? And protected by a 20% defense, too? Well, I'm more than happy to let you know that this team still one-rounds them. The shield can only protect one target at a time. Everyone else unprotected will be nuked, including the Radiant Knight herself. The triple Radiant Knights also take place in the most hated Liberation map, since the two Shamans and two Gladiators ruin everyone's time. I have a very special video of me nuking them in one, coming up next. I'll like to end this video by giving a huge shout-out to Cello934 for sharing their Trinity Rain build for me. Feel free to leave a comment in this video below of any awesome builds that you would like to share as well. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. And also subscribe for more daily Unicorn Overlord videos. Thank you all for 6,000 subscribers.